Judy, look out! Enjoy the view. Welcome back to Marvelous Videos. I'm Rylan, and this is Night of the Demons franchise explained. Are you ready to party? Well, Angela's having a party. Jason and Freddy are too scared to come, but you'll have a hell of a time. Don't worry, you are not being invited to the Halloween party that Angela's hosting. I'm just reminding you of the tagline of cult horror classic, Night of the Demons, written and produced by Joe Augustin and directed by Kevin S. Tenney. By now, you must have obviously understood that the film is about a Halloween party, of course, organized by someone called Angela, in a spooky and infamous mortuary. But even if you didn't go, ten other teenagers did attend it. They performed a seance and released a demon, who possessed and killed them, one after the other. The movie was produced on a meager budget of $1 million within just a few weeks, and the studio was not confident enough to grant it a grand release, as the shows were limited to only a few select theaters. However, the film was pretty successful, begging in around $3.1 million in the theatrical run to everyone's surprise. Horror fans truly loved the movie, and it could have been more successful with a wider release. The first film's success even encouraged the production for two more sequels and a remake of the original in 2009. As for the role of Angela, Amelia Kincaid begged the part as it demanded a great dancer. Angela's best friend Suzanne was featured by Linnea Quigley, who initially had no interest in the role as she felt that she was too old for the role, but she finally accepted. The remaining cast includes Hal Halvins, Alison Barron, Judy Powell, Lance Fenton, among others. The movie was initially titled Halloween Party. However, due to repeated objections from Mustafa Akkad, who produced the film titled Halloween, director Tenney suggested the alternative title of Night of the Demons, to which everyone agreed. So, let's take a look at this glorious Halloween party. Before we get into today's explanation, however, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thanks. Now, let's begin. The first Halloween party on Night of the Demons, 1988. A Halloween party has been organized by a not-so-popular teenager, Angela, and her best friend, Suzanne. The venue for the party was a spooky, abandoned mansion converted into a mortuary called Hull House, considered by many to be the most haunted spot in town. As three friends, Stooge, Helen, and Roger, approached the party, they drove past an older man carrying apples and razor blades. Stooge taunted the old man with inappropriate gestures, while the old man cursed them, saying, They'll get what they deserve! <laughs> There's no fool like an old fool! <laughs> One of the teenagers, Judy, arrived home and inquired whether her boyfriend, Jay, had called, but she learned that her ex-boyfriend, Sal, had called instead. She was not interested in Sal at all. So, when Jay called and told her about their plan to attend Angela's party, she hastily agreed, even though she disliked Angela. When Sal arrived, Judy's brother told him about Judy's plans, and he left for the Hull House with the monster mask of Judy's brother. Angela was busy shoplifting essentials for the party from the convenience store as her seductive friend Suzanne alerted the shopkeepers. As Stooge, Helen, and Roger neared the Hull House, their car had a flat tire, and they decided to walk the remaining way. They definitely felt the spookiness of the place as they discussed the horror incident of the Hull family member, who turned insane and murdered the remaining family members before committing suicide. Judy, Jay, Max, and Franny arrive first as they felt the creepiness of the dark, cold, and deserted place. Max explained that an underground river and high walls around the mansion confined the evil spirits inside the premises. It was on Halloween night. One of them went crazy and slaughtered the entire family, then committed suicide. Eventually, the party began, but soon, the radio batteries died out. Angela proposed to organize a seance, but as they sat in front of a mirror and concentrated, the images faded to black. Shortly, the mirror broke into pieces, and the demon transformed into powder form so that no one could see it, possessing Suzanne, who in turn kissed Angela, making her possessed too. Helen and Roger wanted to leave the haunted house, while Judy and Jay looked for a place to get intimate. But Judy was not interested in making out with Jay, which is why he locked her inside a room. Helen and Roger could not find the exit door, as it completely vanished. Suddenly, Helen disappeared and a scared Roger locked himself inside the car. Meanwhile, Stooge saw Angela dancing suggestively in front of a fireplace. As he tried to kiss Angela, she bit off his tongue. <laughs> 
choreography of this dance was done by Amelia herself and became one of the most famous dance scenes in a horror film. Jay was seduced by Suzanne, and then she killed him by gouging out his eyes. Again, a possessed stooge found Max and Franny making out in a coffin and killed them quite brutally. Sal was petrified to see Angela putting her hand in the fire and joined Roger, who had fallen asleep in the car. Later, in an interview, Amelia recalled that a bucket of ice was kept to extinguish the liquid and fire, or else her hands would have been severely burnt. Sal and Roger rescued Judy, but as Angela hunted them down, they were scattered once again, and eventually, Sal was hurled out of the window by Suzanne. Judy frantically scurried through the mansion to save herself from the demons. <laughs> Angela almost got her. Sal again confronted Angela as both of them fell from the roof, where Sal was killed, impaled by a spear. Judy and Roger were the only ones left, and though they tried hard to escape, they were surrounded by all their friends who had all become possessed demons. Oh, don't tell me you're leaving. However, they managed to crash outside the window and started climbing the wall by grabbing the wire. The demons tried to drag her down, but the sunlight destroyed all the monsters as the sun rose. <laughs> Devastated and shaken, Judy and Roger started heading home. The older man from the first scene watched them as they walked past his house. He murmured that they were disgusting people returning from the party. Later, he sat at breakfast, and he started eating the pie that his wife had prepared. The razor and the apple slipped through his throat. As he died painfully, his wife kissed his forehead and said, Happy Halloween, dear. A typical 80s horror film packed with fear, bloody murders, and erotic content is not the favorite of critics, and the film was no exception, but the horror fans absolutely loved it, making it a cult hit. The film plot is mostly inspired by the 1981 successful horror film The Evil Dead by Sam Raimi, while the gory makeup ideas came from the 1985 horror movie Demons. Fans also connect it with films like Hellraiser and Legend. Hey, it's only inspiration after all. Amidst all the okay-ish stuff, the title sequence by animator Kathy Zielinski is worth mentioning. The incredible animation about the ghosts and ghouls rising from their resting places and floating up to the hill of the haunted house was such an appropriate and well thought of presentation. She was a well-known face in Disney Studios, working on classics like The Little Mermaid, Aladdin, and even the Oscar-winning film Frozen among many more. This project had proved its worth about the dark world and villainy, which had been a source of motivation for many of her following projects. Welcome. I'm so glad you could join us on this very special occasion. The second Halloween party, Night of the Demons 2, 1994. A couple accidentally visited the dilapidated Hull House, totally unaware of the massacre that occurred there six years ago. They were welcomed by Angela and even offered cake but by the time they noticed that the dirt and cobwebs were everywhere, including the cake, it was too late, and they were both murdered quite brutally. The film now focused on St. Rita's Academy, a Catholic boarding school for troubled teens, where three girls, Shirley, Bibi, and Terry, discussed the massacre at Hull House. From them, the audience got to know that the mutilated bodies of everyone but Angela's were recovered. Over and over, high and low, but never found her body. Rumors said that Angela descended into hell, body and soul, and her presence was constantly felt in the Hull House. Suddenly, Angela's sister Melissa, who lived in the same boarding school, requested them to stop joking about the dark, otherworldly topics, and the girls began to taunt her. Opposite to the girls' hostel was the boys' hostel, where Kurt and Johnny kept watching the girls with binoculars, while Perry was a studious student highly interested in demonology. Later that day, the girls kept discussing Melissa, stating that five years ago, Melissa's family received a creepy Halloween card from Angela, signed by her and committed suicide. Deeply troubled and orphaned, Melissa finally landed up in the boarding school. Their discussion was interrupted by Sister Grace, who requested them to show some mercy towards Melissa. Eventually, Shirley got banned from the school Halloween dance for flirting with Kurt on the tennis court. To examine your conscience. Therefore, you will remain in the dormitory tonight. Being desperate, she organized her own Halloween party and tricked Bibi, Terry, Kurt, Johnny, Melissa to all join the party. Her boyfriend Rick and his friend Z-Boy had organized everything for the party and guess the location. After reaching the Hull House, they were terrified by many uncanny incidents. <laughs> 
Mark Beebe saw something peeping from the lipstick in the bathroom. Terry saw a demon face in the toilet, and Melissa saw demonic Angela. The teens were terrified enough to leave the Hull House, except for Z-Boy, who was raped by Angela. While returning, Bibi realized that she was carrying the lipstick from the Hull House, but Shirley snatched it from her as she was trying to throw it. By the way, it was Suzanne's demonic lipstick from the previous film. After coming back to school from the Halloween dance, everyone started enjoying the party, while Shirley went to the restroom to freshen up. As soon as she took out the lipstick, however, the demon was released and immediately possessed Shirley. Rapidly, Angela and Shirley started possessing and killing all the students. Sister Gloria and Perry prepared themselves to confront the demons with holy water, crosses, and other blessed items, and asked all the students to assemble at the church. Amidst the commotion, Perry saw Angela kidnap Melissa, and he was sure that their destination was the Hull House. Consequently, Perry, Johnny, Bibi, Sister Gloria, and Father Bob all headed for the Hull House to rescue Melissa. On reaching there, Father Bob was possessed and killed by demonic Rick, while demon Z-Boy killed Perry. Sister Gloria, Bibi, and Johnny managed to finish off all the demons with holy water, found Melissa sleeping on the altar. Angela wanted to sacrifice Melissa's pure soul to the devil to prove her faithfulness, but Sister Gloria convinced Angela to sacrifice her instead of Melissa. Angela agreed and handed the special sword to Melissa to behead Sister Gloria, but Melissa finally shoved the sword into Angela and killed her with holy water. Unfortunately, as they prepared to escape, Angela took the form of a serpent and attacked once again. Finally, Johnny made a cross-shaped hole in the window, and as sunlight poured in, Angela's body exploded. As the survivors returned to the school, we found a student picking up the pink demonic lipstick from the ground. Night of the Demons 2 was the direct sequel to the 1988 original film and it was released in 1994 on home video by Republic Pictures Home Video. The film, written by Joe Augustin and James Penzi, was directed by Brian Trenchard Smith and starred Amelia Kincaid, Christy Harris, Rick Peters, Jennifer Rode, and Christine Taylor. Honestly, the film has the best storyline out of all the four movies, though it also intensifies the horror and erotic content, including a fascinating touch of humor. Interestingly, the Hull House was an abandoned house owned by a supermarket chain and was about to be demolished. Some legal constraints delayed the demolition while it was rented by the Night of the Demons crew. It was the perfect site as per the film plot, and the first two films were shot there, but soon after, the house was finally demolished. It was located at the junction of Menlo Avenue and West Adams Boulevard in Los Angeles, California. <laughs> The incidents in The Night of the Demons 3, 1997. Another Halloween night has arrived, years after the St. Rita's Academy Massacre, and Officer Larry is on night patrol when he's confronted by Angela at the Hull House and murdered by her. Can you believe it? Officer Larry actually visited the Hull House on a Halloween night. Let us give a quick introduction to the main characters of the film. Notorious Vince, his girlfriend Lois, Nick, Reggie and Orson. They were all driving through the city on Halloween night when they met Holly and Abby, whose car had a breakdown on the road. Holly unwillingly joined them, but remembered Nick from his algebra class, while Nick speculated that Holly had a crush on him. They stopped at a department store where Reggie tried to buy beer using his brother's ID, but the storekeeper pulled out his gun and threatened them while Vince snatched the weapon from him. Two police officers entered the store, and Vince accidentally shot one officer when the storekeeper grabbed Vince, while the other officer shot Reggie in the stomach. A rampage soon broke out in the shop, and all the teenagers fled in the van along with two guns. The shot officer was actually wearing a bulletproof vest and was unharmed. The two officers checked their security camera footage and realized that the shopkeeper's claim of a robbery was false as he himself was actually stealing money from the cash register. They also understood that the teenagers were not criminals, just a bunch of frightened teens. Meanwhile, Angela's wait had come to an end, as the scared teens decided to hide at the Hollis house as their van ran out of fuel. <laughs> 
Abby warned them about all of the rumors surrounding the place, but Vince forced them to enter the house at gunpoint and even fired a hole in the wall to facilitate the evil spirit's entry, taking Angela's form. As Vince, Lois, and Nick looked around the house, Orson watched the remaining teens along with Angela. Soon, Angela played music and started her usual seductive dance. As Orson was distracted, Holly and Abby tried to escape with an injured Reggie using the hot wiring technique, but she didn't want to leave without Nick. Angela went on seducing Orson and soon killed him with her long, monstrous tongue. Soon, Abby was tricked and possessed by Angela, while demonic Orson ran over Reggie. Abby, who was converted into a demon, tried to allure Vince, until he heard the sound of the crashing van. Lois was scratched and slapped by Abby, while her hand was transformed into a snake, which eventually killed her. That was quite innovative. <laughs> Holly tried to call the police using Officer Larry's car, but Officer Larry was still there, as a demon of course, and soon attacked Holly. Luckily, as soon as Holly stepped over the underground steam, Larry burst into flames. Well, Holly again went inside the house to get everybody out, though I guess she didn't know that only three of them were actually still alive. Suddenly, police officer Dewurst reaches the Hull house and offers to help them. Next, Vince came out with Angela as his hostage. Dewurst tries to convince him that the officer he shot was alive and that he had nothing to be scared of, but Angela confused him, stating that the police were lying. Vince opened fire, and in the shootout, Vince was shot dead. Angela and all the other demons now attacked them all together, but Angela gave them a proposal. She said that if Holly sacrificed her soul, then she would let Nick and Dewurst go. Holly agreed, and Angela, with all of her demons, started dragging Holly towards the Hull house. Officer Dewurst managed to stab Angela with the switchblade, and as they tried to escape, Angela confronted them, pulled out Officer Dewurst's heart, killing him instantly. As Nick and Holly stepped outside the boundary, Angela caught Holly's hand, and the tug-of-war continued until the sun rose and shattered Angela to pieces. Holly closed the gate to the Hull house with a cross and promised that she would come back there every Halloween night to ensure that no one ever entered the house again, while Angela's roar of laughter could be heard from the distance. You got a friend for me? <laughs> night of the Demons 3 was the last sequel of the series, released in 1997 by Paramount Pictures and Republic Pictures, respectively. The director of the 1988 film was the writer of the third sequel, and it was directed by Jim Kaufman. Amelia Kincaid was back as Angela, maintaining the continuity nicely, while other actors included Vlastavrana, Tara Sloan, Joe Gordon, and Christian Tessier. Many of Angela's floating scenes and inside shots of the Hull House were taken from the original film. The film successfully concluded the series, with similar horror and eroticism like its previous installments, but it's a fun horror flick for any fan of gory films. Advanced Halloween Party with Night of the Demons, Remake 2009. The movie commenced in the year 1925, when Evangeline Broussard was seen on the verge of committing suicide. A man approached her and tried to stop her, but Evangeline called him a liar and hanged herself from the balcony. The man stared at her dead body, and his eyes changed into a demonic form. The film then turns to the present day, when Maddie, Lily, and Suzanne were all invited to a party hosted by Angela. Audrey here at Broussard House. And I want you to honor Evangeline and her dark soul. Maddie's ex-boyfriend Colin was dealing drugs at the party, while Lily's ex-boyfriend Dex was also present with his friend Jason. Not to mention that the party was hosted at the same mansion where Evangeline had hanged herself and six people had disappeared. When Maddie went to use the toilet, a hand grabbed her through the mirror, yet she didn't pay any heed to it, chalking it up to a prank pulled by Angela. Meanwhile, the police stopped the party as Angela was taking money from the invitees. Everyone left the house while Colin tried to hide the drugs before leaving. But after some time, everybody returned to Angela's house as they couldn't find Suzanne and Colin, who had returned to retrieve his drugs. They had found that Suzanne had passed out due to overdrinking, while Angela and Colin looked for the hidden drugs. As they reached the basement, the duo found a hidden room containing six skeletons. Angela guessed that the skeletons belonged to the guests who went missing from Evangeline's party, but one of the skeletons suddenly bit Angela's hand as she tried to pull out a gold tooth from its mouth. She started transforming into a demon. In the meantime, Suzanne narrated the story about Evangeline practicing dark magic to get close to Louis. After a seance, she confronted the seven demons, 
who had been banished from hell, and they needed seven human sacrifices to rise again and control the human world. Evangeline sought to take her own life rather than let that happen. Only the maid was left alive, and she almost turned insane due to the impact of the events on the cursed night, and had scribbled spells on the walls of her room. Six people had vanished, Evangeline was dead, and the maid had lost her mind. All because of the evil spirits. Angela kissed Dex, converting him into a demon while Dex converted Lily into a demon by intimidating her. Next, Angela lured Suzanne and ripped her breasts and face. Jason was horrified to see Lily inserting lipstick through her breast and taking it out of her privates, with a pool of blood flowing out. That scene was extremely intense. The demons had learned a lot from the last two decades, so before you realize it, all but three of the teens had already been converted into monsters. <sighs> Maddie, Colin, and Jason escaped the demons and finally took shelter in the maid's room. The spells on the walls prevented the demons from entering the room. This way is... Ew. Now, blood started pouring from the walls and washed off all the spells. As the three of them tried to redraw the spells, the demons created an illusion of daylight and the group stepped out of the room. I warned you, the demons had become extremely smart. Hence, Jason was killed while Maddie and Colin returned to the maid's room. Nonetheless, the rotten floors of the maid's room had collapsed. Colin crashed into the basement. Maddie quickly climbed down a rope to help him, but alas, Colin had also become possessed. Maddie fought her way back to the maid's room and reached the balcony, where she hanged herself, just the way Evangeline had. As the sun rose and the demons were killed, it seemed that it was Maddie's turn to fool the demons, as she had tied the rope around her waist. Thus, Maddie was the sole survivor as she walked out of the exit gate. This 2009 film was a direct remake of the 1988 film, directed by Adam Garrosh, who had co-written the screenplay with Jace Anderson. Acting in the film, we find Edward Furlong, Monica Kina, Bobby Sue Leather, among others. I really don't know why the budget of the film was $10 million, but it merely grossed $64,000. After watching the two movies of the series, the last sequel and the remake hardly offer anything special. Oh, <laughs> future of the franchise. In June 2013, Tenney had announced a sequel to the 2009 film titled After Party, which was to be directed by Anthony Hickox. Although a Kickstarter campaign was launched to raise funds, it was quite unsuccessful. The disaster of the last remake in 2009 was probably the cause of the failure of the project as well as the Kickstarter campaign. The demons, as mentioned earlier, were definitely more intelligent and more competent than their predecessors. Let us thank Maddie and Evangeline's presence of mind for saving the world from demonic invasion, and the failing Kickstarter campaign for saving the world from another sequel. Last but not least, let's just all be careful and watch out before attending your next Halloween party. <laughs> if you enjoyed today's video, don't forget to send a like and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. For Marvelous Videos, I'm Rylan. Have a good one, be safe, and thanks for watching. Demons, <laughs> not so smart.